All right, hi. So let's come on into the inside and let's take a look at what we've got on the inside of the camper. Now we've had the air conditioner on for a few minutes, so it's, it's nice and cool inside. Uh, so we're just going to take a little tour. So I'm going to step into the master. You can go around that way here. So this is kind of your master bedroom. You've got a full-size king bed here, nice comfy top. You have storage all around. Uh, this is your emergency exit if you were ever to have to use it. That's your emergency exit window. You've got storage up top. You've got lighting. You have a vent uh, right up here if you need it. You also have lighting up underneath uh, here. You can turn those on. These doors do slide closed and uh, you can have a, just a little bit of privacy uh, you know, if you're a family and you, know, you might need that every now and then. So uh, this, is, this is pretty simple. Uh, down underneath in this area, down in here, you do have uh, a couple of outlets down there and uh, so you can hook your cell phones and stuff uh, up to that. Moving on out this way, uh, we'll take a look. We'll come back and do the TV in just a second. Uh, but this is the kitchen area uh, here. Down here, uh, you just have some pots and pans and such, uh, different types, coffee makers, um, all, the, all the things you need, uh, toaster, all that type of thing. Uh, this is your, of course, you do have a fire extinguisher here. Uh, coming on around, of course, you've got your sink. Now, with your sink also comes two uh, pieces. There's another small one that's underneath there that go up here, these are not cutting boards. Let me say it again, these are not cutting boards. All these are is to put up here when the camper is stationary so you can have more workspace. Just cause it's a smaller area in case you need somewhere to sit some things, you can put those on there. But they uh, are definitely not, not cutting boards. Uh, you've got more pots and pans, it's just the other side of the cabinet that, that, uh, that we saw. You've got hot and cold water. Uh, right in this cabinet here, it's just another entrance to the same area. Uh, you have your, your forks and knives and spoons and such. They're all clean. And uh, down here you've got some more utensils. Uh, in here you also have uh, a lighter. And I'll pull this out just for a second. So when you go to uh, light your stove, it's just like any gas stove you've ever used. You turn it on uh, light and then you, you, know, you put your lighter up to it. And when, of course, your gas is coming through, it, it will light. The same thing is true for the oven. Way in the back, way in the back, is a uh, pilot light. And you would just, right here where it says pilot, you would just put that to there, go back in there and light it, and it will come on. Now, we have a drip pan that we always put in here. And uh, actually this pan, it's this pan here. And we use this, again, number one, it's a drip pan, but it also spreads out the heat. It's not to be used to cook, be cooked on or anything like that. It is, it's meant to stay in there. It spreads out the heat, makes for a better cooking uh, experience, you know, if you're uh, cooking, um, you know, baking biscuits or whatever, wherever the case may be. All right. Got your range hood here, the lights and the, and the, the uh, fan. You've got a regular microwave, just like any microwave, and you have storage up here. Uh, as well. There is an outlet right up under here and another light and you can plug in your toasters or whatever you want to uh, right there. This is your refrigerator. Now the way the refrigerator works is this is not like your normal household refrigerator. Uh, this is basically a heat deduction refrigerator uh, which means it does not have a compressor uh, like your normal home refrigerator does. So when you're, when you're hooked up outside, all you do is you come in, you press the on button right here, and then that light auto will come on. And that makes the refrigerator come on. Now, your refrigerator, uh, and just plan on this, it takes about 12 hours for, your, for your, your refrigerator to cool down to cooling temperature. So when you get there, uh, let's say you get to your campsite and you're set up and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, it's going to be the next morning before your refrigerator is good and good and cool. So if you have uh, perishable items, definitely make sure you have some ice and uh, a cooler or something like that to keep them in. We have a trash can here, and this is your just your general f fuse box, just in case you might need it. And here we have a pantry, uh, plenty of room to store. Uh, you have a couch here. This is a pull-out couch. You just pull these away and pull this out and it turns into a pull-out couch. The same thing is true with your dining area. Uh, you can actually take these legs out and this table will then sit down on a couple of, on a couple of uh, supports here. 
And then these backing pillows go on here and it makes a nice, uh, a nice bed if you need that for additional, uh, additional space. You've also got some additional storage uh, up under here if you uh, might, might need it. Now let's come on back here to the bunkhouse area. And uh, this is where our kids sleep. It's a nice area. You have a working television back here. This is, uh, yeah, the, you can sit, got the DVD player and such right here. Uh, you have one, two, three, four areas to sleep. You can sleep as many as five back here. Um, make sure that your, your, your bigger, maybe your teenagers, they will want to sleep either on this bunk or down here. Now this is like a pull out bed. What you do is just pull this up. This bottom piece flips out. The same thing true with that one, and it becomes either like a single size bed or together it becomes a nice double. Um, your smaller kids uh, can, can certainly sleep on these bunks. Um, if you've got a heavier, smaller kid, you might want them to sleep on this one versus this one because this one will actually go up and down. So this would d definitely be your, uh, your smallest uh, uh, person would, would want to would sleep up there. All right, and again, we've got storage. Uh, back here and uh, remotes for the television and uh, you know an outlet to plug in uh, and recharge things. If you are hooked up to 50 amps, uh, you can run this um, air conditioner as well. If you are only hooked up to 30 amps, you can't. You can only run, run the one air conditioner. But if you are hooked up to the full 50 amps, uh, then you can run this uh, air conditioner uh, in addition to the main air conditioner as well. All right, let's step in the bathroom here. All right, so we have a rack right here that you can hang all kind of stuff in. It just works great for that. Let's step in here. All right, now the, turn on the lights here. Okay, here we go. So the, uh, the enemy to most uh, RVs is moisture. And so you have right up top, you have a fan. And so when you're taking showers and stuff in here, just open that up, turn the fan on and it gets the moisture out of here. Uh, at night before you go to bed or there's a storm coming, obviously close it. You have your shower right here behind you. And again, just hot and cold water. It takes very little hot and cold water, very little water pressure for this uh, spigot to work. Um, we take what we call, you know, uh, marine showers. Uh, you get in, get wet, you know, turn it off, um, put some more soap and everything on, rinse it off and then get out. We have a family of six. Uh, if we do it that way, everybody can get showers and, uh, and, and then that will fill up the gray tank. So you can kind of get an idea of how much water you're using. The hot water tank is only three gallons. So you're gonna go through hot water quick. This is not a shower where you can be like at home and just kind of sit and, and, and kind of let the water run on you because you will run out, of, uh, you will run out of, of hot water. All right, so you've got areas for storage here and down here as well. Now. Let's talk about how you set up the black water tank. When you get hooked up, what you're going to do, and this is everything is hooked up, your water is hooked up, everything is hooked up. You're gonna come in here, you're going to take one of these orange packets, and uh, the, they sell these at any of the, at any Walmart, anywhere like that. So if you run out, you know, we buy them, we put them in here, but if you run out, you know, you're gonna to need to stop at Walmart or the camp store or wherever and, and pick up some more of these. All you do is you take this packet, you just put it in here, you press down on this lever, this is your flushing lever, and you let water run in here. You need to stand here for about a solid 60 seconds with the water running. It dissolves this packet in the tank and it gives enough water in the tank so the packet can work. If you don't do that, then again, it's like I said outside, you're gonna have solids exposed and, and different things and, and, that, and you're, gonna get a, you're gonna get an odor from it. So make sure that you do this every time. So if, if your black tank gets full and uh, you have to go outside and empty it, make sure you come back in, put a new one of these in there, uh, hold your water spigot down or your, the, the, the uh, pedal down for about 60 seconds and let it, let it fill up with water uh, so you don't have uh, an odor. We do have some toilet paper here. If you have to replenish on toilet paper, you need to, you don't necessarily need to buy the, the expensive RV kind. You just need to buy the cheapest, thinnest toilet paper that you can find uh, because the toilet paper needs to dissolve very easily. Um, if, you, if you don't, what'll happen is it'll get clogged up in there. Worst case scenario is, is that we end up having to really do a deep thorough cleaning when we get it back and then we'll have to charge you more. So it's just better to just go ahead and use the real thin, if not 
the RV toilet paper that is designed to dissolve uh, very quickly and easily in there so we don't run into those types of problems. Also in here, and if you'll just step this way, right here behind you, you have a couple of switches. Uh, this is the switch for the uh, outside lights right here. You can see me turn, turning those on, see it going on and off right there. This is your switch for just your overhead light. Uh, you turn that on and or you can use it up here. This is your awning, extend and retract for the back here. All right, so you can see I'm pressing uh, retract right there and, and it is coming in. Uh, we won't do the whole thing, we'll just stop it there. But it'll come on in and it'll be obvious uh, when, to, uh, when to stop. All right, just moving on forward here, we've discussed all of this. So let's come right back up here. So you've got your television, you've got your control panel. A couple of things to remember with this. Uh, your television will work on cable. Uh, it'll work on this regular local telev uh, uh, satellite television channels. There's a sat there's a antenna on the top that, that, uh, that is ready to go. If you want to use your radio, you just turn it on and you have A, B, and C settings right here. A, B, C. A is your inside speakers. B is inside and outside. C are your outside speakers. This thing is Bluetooth uh, uh, enabled, so you can pair your phone up with it if you'd like, and you can sit outside and listen to whatever kind of music you would like to, it's really cool. And then right here, we've got your, your control panel. And if you can zoom in here on this, on this control panel, I'll show you a couple of things, okay? So this says battery, you're not using battery because you're gonna be hooked up to shore power. You're not using the fresh because this is the fresh water tank and you're gonna be hooked up to city uh, water, essentially. Here's your first indicator, your black tank. And it says black one. We have black one and gray one. Those are the only two things that you'll have to worry about. So you press black one and it's empty, just like it should be. But if it's full, you're gonna see that go up. And once it gets up to full, it's when you need to, uh, you, you definitely need to um, um, drain it. Same thing true with the gray tank. You press gray one, it's empty. But as you use shower water and sink water, this is going to go up. All right, and it's just that simple. This is LP gas for your water here. You don't even need to use that because all you do is turn on electric. Right here for water, turn on electric, and that's gonna start heating your water up. Uh, you don't need to use a water pump because again, you're connected just to uh, uh, city water. These are your porch lights here, just like in the bathroom. Uh, I'll step out here, you can see, I just turned them on. You can see the lights are on right there, okay? And uh, I'll turn those off so you can see that, just on and off. And then this next one are your ceiling lights. And you can see it went dark. Uh, that just sends power to your uh, ceiling lights. These two big buttons here are the room in and out. So this first one uh, is for this first one here. And if I press room uh, in, you can see that the slide out is coming in on us. And if I press out, the slide out is gonna go out. And all you do is you just hold this down until it stops and then you know it's out as far as it needs to go very straightforward very easy to use one last thing that you're going to definitely want to use is your air conditioner and the way you turn your all you do is you come here and you press the mode button that press it again and then you can go auto or you can go high low we don't let's say just let's go high and you press it again and here's your cooling. Let's just say we want to go down to 68. And if we wait just a minute, the air conditioner should, there it is. And the air conditioner comes on and you can feel it coming out of these vents. You can also feel it coming out of here. This is where the main one, and this was open right now, so it's coming out pretty hard. But if you close it, then it allows the pressure to go through the vents into the, to the different rooms. But uh, this will absolutely uh, cool you down remarkably. All right, again, any questions on the inside? You have lights uh, up here and you've got them above your uh, your table here. Th these windows will open up. Just remember, you know, to close everything up, double check, triple check things before you get on the road and you will be good to go. Now let's step outside. All right, one last thing that we gotta do is we have to set up the hitch. Now the way this works, now you can see that I've already got it set up here, all right? So this is what right looks like when you are, before you go down the road. And I'm gonna step over here. So you have your, your cord connected from your trailer into your 
uh, in, into your vehicle. Uh, this is a seven, well, I believe a seven point uh, hitch it goes into here. All right. Now this also controls your, uh, your trailer brakes. Uh, this, this camper has trailer brakes on it. So uh, when this is plugged in, that allows your vehicle to uh, be in sync with the camp with the trailer brakes as well. Of course, you've got your hitch up and down here and uh, you know, you've got your, I mean, it, you, I'm sure you've hooked up, everybody's hooked up a trailer before. Uh, so this is pretty much the same thing. The biggest difference are these sway bars. And what you do with these sway bars are, well, oh, I put it on the truck up here. Here it is. So this is your sway bar connector. And what you do is, now I'm gonna put this down real quick. Now I'm gonna lift up on the vehicle, on the camper, just to show you, to show you how this works. All right, these are your sway bars. This is what keeps your camper from, from just swaying all over the road. All you do is, with this sway bar, all right, I gotta kick it in just a little bit so I can get this out, all right? So you got your L bracket, and then this sway bar just comes off. And it can just kinda, when you're not using a camper, you can just kinda push it up underneath, and uh, they, they will stay there. But when you're hooking it up, what you do is you bring it over, you take this piece, you go underneath just like so, put the hook just like that, and then all you do is you just pick up and down, and it snaps into place. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your L hook right here. It goes in just like so. So the top wraps around the top and then this little clip just clips down and then that's what keeps it in place. Of course, make sure that your tongue uh, clip is down and that it is locked in place. Also, make sure that you have your chains locked in place as well. Make sure as well that your, um, that your hitch lift here is uh, all the way up. And this is a manual one, so it takes a second, but obviously you can see underneath here, make sure this is all the way up. That way when you are uh, going down the road and hit uneven spots, uh, you are not uh, scraping that against the ground. All right. So again, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the one thing I did uh, not mention are your wheel chocks. Of course, before you do anything, when you back into your, uh, your, your spot or you pull through if you're fortunate enough, um, make sure you have your wheel chocks down. Uh, put those under, you know, on each side of the tire and then you can unhook the trailer. And one thing I did forget to show you about these awnings. They look kind of high right now. I'll tell you what, let's do it with these back here. The way you get these to come down to kind of slant down here, you just pull down. You just pull down on this just a little bit. And you do the same thing over here. Just pull down on that, that elbow bends. And this just allows them to come down. And then all you gotta do, again, is just retract them on in. And they will, they will, go, they will come all the way in. All right? And you definitely want to have those at an angle going down just in case you get a rain, something along those lines. You don't want it puddling up there uh, sitting there and, and, you know, coming down on top of you want it to drain out. Just remember though, if a storm is coming up, make sure you put these in. If you are going to leave this camper for any amount of time, make sure you put these in because inevitably you'll come back. A storm has come up when these summer storms and now it is ripped these things completely off. And that's going to be several thousand dollars uh, in damage that you just don't want, uh, just don't want to have your steps fold up by just grabbing the bottom and then grabbing underneath here and this handle and push. Do not get your fingers caught up in here. That you, it, it will break your fingers. Just push in just like that. And the same thing is true up here in the front. Just like that. And then they're up and they are ready to go. So everything that you do for setup, uh, you just do in reverse on your way home. Biggest thing is just be diligent about everything that you do. Don't rush anything. Double check, triple check uh, all your setups. Make sure you have everything done right. It's better to take your time and do it right than to rush through it and uh, have a very costly mistake. Again, uh, going down the road, 65 miles an hour is, uh, is the safe limit uh, for this camper. You'll definitely wanna do that. Uh, you'd rather get there safe and, uh, and um, 
and, and not have any expenses than to try to push it and end up uh, messing something up. When you are backing this camper, make sure you have uh, someone looking out for you. What we do is we call each other on the phone and I'm sitting in the truck and my wife or my son is in the back and they're talking to me on the speaker on the truck and they're telling me kind of how to go left or right. Just take it slow. Uh, it can be frustrating sometimes, especially if you've not done it before because this is a long camper. Uh, but, uh, but I promise you, you will get in there. You will have a fun time. And uh, like I tell folks, listen, don't take anything seriously that anybody says to you while you're back in a camper. There's words that come out of people's mouths when you're back in a camper that never come out again. So, uh, you know, just forgive one another once a camper's put up and then go have a great, uh, have a great time. If you need anything at all, please do not hesitate to contact us. Please let us know. Give us a call. Uh, my number is, will be on the information that you have, but it is 843-340-7569, 843-340-7569. And uh, we'd rather you call us anytime, day or night, uh, if you have any questions at all, so we can help you resolve uh, those questions, uh, you know, and, and uh, before something uh, goes bad, because we certainly want you to have a great, uh, a great time. Thank you for renting from us. Uh, we take it seriously and we appreciate it. Um, we take a lot of pride in that you would choose us and trust us uh, with your accommodations for your camping trip. I hope you have a great time. Be safe, travel safe, and we'll see you when you get back.